All right, what's going on guys? I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media back with another Dokkan Battle video. Welcome to the first edition of Pass or Pull, formerly known as Should You Summon, but then I thought everybody uses Should You Summon, so we might as well try to be a little bit unique on this channel and have our own unique name. But anyways, the concept is exactly the same as Should You Summon, and as you guys know, the transforming Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku banner and transforming Majin Vegeta banners will be available on Global very soon. I want to say in about a week from now. And the question that everybody has been asking me on my streams, videos, social media, so on and so forth has been, should I summon on these banners or should I save my stones for the five year anniversary? or something else in the future. And as always, my answer to this question is, it depends. It depends on you, it depends on whether or not you want these characters, whether or not you have a lot of the units on these banners, um, how many stones you have, so on and so forth. So I wanna leave the decision ultimately up to you guys. But what I will do in this video is give you guys all the relevant information you need to make as informed of a decision as possible about what you wanna do with your stones as it pertains to these banners. All right, so in today's video, we're gonna look at the banners, of course. We're gonna look at the units themselves. We're gonna take a look at the animations. We're also gonna be, looking, be taking a look at their new categories as well, so that you guys have everything you need to make that informed decision. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. And we're gonna start here with the Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku banner first. I mean, as you can see, he starts off as a Super Saiyan 2 Goku, and then eventually transforms into a Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku. And the main thing that everybody has been saying, at least from what I've seen, is that these banners are must skips because they're trash, they're terrible banners, and you know, the units are garbage, so on and so forth. And I just don't really see it that way. I mean, maybe it's just like a select few people that are saying it a lot, but I do see a lot of people just saying these banners are terrible and you must skip. But I really feel like it really depends on, first of all, how long you've been playing this game for, right? Because the main reason I think a lot of people are saying this banner is bad or these banners are bad is because many of these units are fairly old. They've been around for a while, right? So as you can see, like Super Saiyan 4 Goku, 120 lead, been out for like at least two to three years, uh, maybe two and a half, something like that. Actually, no, he came out during the two year anniversary. So it's been almost three years since he's been out. And of course, the Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku around the same time as well. Uh, UI Goku, one of the original uh, category leads on Global. I mean, mm, not one of the original, but like he's been around for at least like two plus years. And uh, of course, this guy was out before even all those um, 120 leads, right? So like some very old units on this banner. But that doesn't make the banner bad because first of all, of course, we have this guy right here and he is a very, very good unit for sure. And we also have a new uh, Saiyan man who is very solid as well. And then we have an LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku who, in my opinion, it's still one of the best units in the game. If you guys don't have him, then it exponentially just increases the value of this banner just because this guy is on it, right? And then a transforming Goku, even though he's not used as much these days, he's still a very, very strong, very good unit. UI Goku, you know, he has his uses. Um, I know defensively he just really, really lacks, but he's still a good unit nonetheless. Uh, these 120 leads, yes, a little bit outdated, but still can do some good damage. And then this dude, even though he's actually the oldest featured SSR, I mean, with his Extreme Z Awakening, he is an absolute monster, man. He's actually one of the hardest hitting TURs in this game right now. So I don't really understand when people say that this banner is bad because the overall value here is still better than your average Dokkan Fest banner. You know what I mean? So in my opinion, banner pretty solid. Is it as good as the upcoming five year anniversary banners? Not even close, all right? Not even close. So if you're comparing you know, these banners to two of the best banners we've ever seen in the five-year banners, then no, it's not a fair comparison, right? But uh, I would still say good value here. Same thing with the Vegeta banner, honestly. It's very similar, 
So we got the uh, new Majin Vegeta. We got a new Dabura who is very solid. We have this transforming uh, Vegeta from last year's Saiyan Day who you know, can still do some really good damage, some good tanking, uh, good leader skill obviously for uh, pure Saiyans. And then we have LR Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, just like LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku. If you guys don't have him, or you, even if you just want dupes, it's gonna increase the value of the banner by a lot. And then um, SSBE Vegeta, like when did this guy stop being awesome? He's still an awesome unit. He still hits pretty hard. He still does some really, really good tanking. Still very useful in a lot of events in this game. And uh, aside from that, I mean, this dude is one of the best tanks in the game. Uh, this guy is getting an Extreme Z Awakening. Right now he doesn't have one, but once he gets that easy A, becomes really, really strong. And uh, you know what? Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, yes, he is outdated. No, he doesn't do that well anymore. Still pretty good. Still pretty good. So for newer players out there, if you don't have a lot of these units, the value of these banners actually pretty good. Um, for more veteran players, yeah, you know what, it's not as exciting, but if you need dupes for like this dude, or this dude, or this guy, and obviously nobody has these guys yet because they're just coming out, then I feel like the value is still there, man. I still feel like they're not like terrible banners, like people are making them out to be, right? And this is of course assuming that they don't make any changes to the banners. Um, I feel like if they do make changes, it's not necessarily going to be for the worse, right? Like I don't see that happening because I think Bandai knows that the hype around these banners is not super high, especially when people know what's coming for the five year anniversary. So the banners, in my opinion, are either going to stay exactly the same or they're going to make them better, right? Like maybe, you know, change out one of the 120 leads or maybe not this guy, but like maybe this guy for like a category lead. And then on the Goku banner, they might switch out, you know, Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku or maybe SSB KK for a category lead as well, just to make these banners a little bit more enticing. More likely than not, it's going to stay exactly the same. But if there are changes, I think it's going to be positive changes. All right. So there are the banners, like I said. I think they're pretty good. Anyways, let's move on to the animations because I know everybody really cares about those. I think animations are a huge part of this game, obviously. Um, sometimes almost more than like the actual passives and leader skills and stuff like that. So uh, let's start with, I guess, I think this one is for the Majin Vegeta. So what I'm gonna do right now is actually disappear for a second so you guys can fully enjoy the animations without my face distracting you. So I'm gonna disappear and uh, enjoy. Here we go, guys. So obviously that was the animation for the new Fizz Dabura that's coming with the Majin Vegeta. And now we have the animations for the Majin Vegeta himself. Dope. Okay, so now let's move on to the Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku. The first thing you're going to see is actually the Saiya Man, and then we're going to go into the Super Saiyan 3 Goku.
And there you go, guys. So I'm going to pop back in now. And uh, my overall impression of both of these animations for both the main units, I mean, I feel like Sayaman and Debora, like the animations are okay. They're not bad, but nothing to get too excited for. But as far as the um, Maja Vegeta and Goku go, they look really good, man. These are some solid, solid animations. Am I gonna say they're the best I've seen in this game? No, not even close. I feel like um, that kind of goes to, you know, still like Transforming Cooler or uh, Namek Goku. Obviously the LR Gogeta and Vegito for the five year anniversary, like those are in a different tier for them by themselves. I think these guys are like right there, maybe like the tier below. And uh, I still really like these animations. I, I really do. Like, I think they look awesome. So from an animation perspective, especially the close-ups, man, the close-ups are awesome. Anyways, from that perspective, I think uh, they're quality. You know, they're very, very quality. So uh, those are the animations. Let's now move on to the details for the actual units from the themselves because this video is going a little bit long. I want to keep it under like 20 minutes if possible. So starting with Goku here. His leader skill is Other World Warriors, a brand new category we'll check out in a second. Q plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 170%. And usually when you see a uh, leader skill like this where it's like 170% across the board or even higher possibly with like Q plus 4, um, it means the category is not super good or like it's okay, maybe like a very small category like the representatives of Universe 7 for example. Um, but that category is actually pretty good, right? This category... It's okay, you guys will see in a second. Okay, or Super Saiyan 3, which obviously we know is an amazing category. Super Saiyan 3 category, Q plus 3, HP, attack, and defense, plus 150%. Moving on to a super attack, Super Kamehameha raises attack for one turn and causes immense damage. And his passive is attack and defense plus 100%, plus an additional defense boost by up to 60%. The more HP remaining, the greater the defense boost. So he's the most tanky when you're at full HP. And an additional attack boost by up to 60%, the less HP remaining, the greater the attack boost. So as you lose HP, he gets less tanky, so he loses defense, or he doesn't get as much extra defense, but he gets more attack. So the lower your HP, the, more, the harder he's going to hit here. Plus an additional attack and defense plus 30% when performing a super attack with three or more key spheres obtained, which of course, for the most part, is pretty easy to meet. Three key spheres, not that many. And then transform when conditions are met. His transformation conditions are he will transform when facing only one enemy whose HP is 80% or more, starting from the third turn from start of battle. So. Uh, third turn is awesome. If it was just that, it'd be really, really easy to meet. But there is that one enemy restriction, which uh, obviously for certain events means that he's never going to transform. But uh, overall, not a bad transformation condition by any means. Links, Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Golden Warrior, Kamehameha, Prepare for Battle, Supreme Warrior, or sorry, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. And this dude has nine categories. Majin Buu Saga. Resurrected Warriors, Super Saiyan 3, Pure Saiyans, Transformation Boost, Goku's Family, Kamehameha, Otherworld Warriors, and Super Saiyan 2. So he's going to be a very versatile unit as far as team building goes. You can throw him on almost like any team you want really. And at least, at least any of these teams, which obviously is a lot of options. And uh, as far as his transformation goes, when he transforms into Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku, his super attack will greatly raise attack for one turn and cause immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. And his passive is attack and defense plus 120% plus an additional defense boost by up to 77%. The more HP remaining, the greater the defense boost. An additional attack boost by up to 77%. The less HP remaining, the greater the attack boost. So same thing as his pre-transformation except bigger uh, percentages here, 77% versus... Uh, I think it's 60, yeah, 60% here, and he gets 120% uh, attack and defense right off the bat, as opposed to 100%. And he has a chance of evading enemies' attack, including super attacks, plus 33%, plus an additional attack and defense, plus 33%, with three or more key spheres obtained. So if you get three or more key spheres, he has a 33% to dodge attacks, and an additional attack and defense, plus 33%. And then if you collect six or more key spheres, then he gets attacks effective against all types. So obviously this part is a little bit harder to reach or a little bit harder to activate because six or more key spheres is not something that you get regularly on 
um, you know, like a lot of events. Unless you're using like orb changers or orb changing items, uh, you're not going to be getting six or more key spheres at that, uh, that often. But if you do, then he's going to be hitting much harder because, of course, attacks effective against all types is a pretty uh, broken mechanic. All right. Like, just look at, you know, AGL Gogeta or STR Gogeta, for example. Like, they hit really, really hard because they have attacks effective against all types. And Lynx uh, stay the same except for the fact that he gets limit breaking form and over in a flash. And I do believe that he loses prepare for battle, which is unfortunate because prepare for battle is pretty much the most common key link among like summonable Dokkan Fest units. Um, so the fact that he loses that kind of sucks. But if you're running like a mostly Super Saiyan 3 team, I mean, almost everybody will have over in a flash. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. And uh, there you go, that is the Goku. He hits really hard, he has some good defense, and uh, of course, in addition to the defense, he also has a 33% chance to evade attacks uh, if you get three or more key spheres, which you're gonna be getting a lot. And then he'll hit extra hard when you get six or more key spheres. So that is the Goku right there. Let's move on to the Tech Mod of Vegeta. Uh, his new leader skill or new category is Super Saiyan 2. K plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 170%, um, just like the Goku. And uh, his category, this category is actually much better than the other world, uh, other world warriors category. And uh, resurrected warriors, K plus 3, HP, attack, and defense plus 150%. Resurrected warriors, of course, a very good category. The only issue I see with that category, honestly, is that like sometimes you have some key issues because uh, a lot of the units don't link too well with each other, but if you build the team correctly, it should be okay. And his super attack is Final Flash, raises defense for one turn and causes immense damage. Passive is attack and defense plus 100%, plus an additional attack, a attack boost by up to 60%. The more HP remaining, the greater the attack boost. An additional defense boost by up to 60%, the less HP remaining, the greater the defense boost. So, as you can see, he actually has the inverse of the Goku, where Goku has uh, defense with higher HP and then more attack with lower HP. Majin Vegeta has more attack with more HP and more defense with lower HP. And then he also gets an additional attack and defense plus 30% when performing a super attack with three or more key spheres obtained, which is exactly the same as Goku. And then he will power up with Bobbidi's magic when conditions are met, as in transform into Majin Vegeta. And the conditions are exactly the same as well, so power up with Bobbidi's magic when facing only one enemy whose HP is 80% or more, starting from the third turn from start of battle. Links are Saiyan Warrior Race, Super Saiyan, Saiyan Pride, Royal Lineage, Prepare for Battle, Supreme Power, and Fierce Battle. And his categories are Resurrected Warriors, Majin Buu Saga, Pure Saiyans, Vegeta's Family, Worthy Rivals, and Super Saiyan 2. And once he transforms into Majin Vegeta, his super attack is Final Flash, greatly raises defense for one turn, and causes immense damage with a high chance of stunning the enemy. And if you look at Goku here, Goku raises attack with a high chance of stunning the enemy. So the only difference here is that Majin Vegeta raises defense, Goku raises attack, and his passive is, is attack and defense plus 120% plus an additional attack boost by up to 77%. The more HP remaining, the greater the attack boost. An additional defense boost by up to 77%. The less HP remaining, the greater the defense boost. So once again, just the inverse, the reverse, I guess. Is it inverse? I think it's inverse of uh, Goku where he gets more attack when he's higher HP and then more defense when you're at lower HP, and then attacks effective against all types um, with three or more key spheres obtained, and then guard activated against all attacks with six or more key spheres obtained. So instead of having uh, attacks effective against all types at six key or at uh, six key spheres, um, this guy will get it at three. So that means he's actually on average, I believe, gonna be doing more damage than Goku. Like Goku has a higher peak Goku, if you get the six key spheres, he's going to be hitting harder than Majin Vegeta. But I think for the most part, since it's harder to get six key spheres, Majin Vegeta is actually going to be doing more damage most of the time, unless you, of course, you're bringing orb changers and stuff like that, right? And then if you have six key spheres, he guards against all attacks, which means that he's going to be getting, um, he's going to be tanking really well because guard effective, or sorry, guard activated 
against all attacks will decrease the amount of damage you take by quite a bit in addition to him raising, greatly raising defense for one turn on his super. So he's going to be a good tank, he's going to be doing some really good damage because he gets attacks effective against all types and it's easier to activate this for Majin Vegeta than Goku. Of course Goku gets the additional attack and defense plus 33%, right? So let's say you're getting 6 key spheres, like I said, um, he is going to be hitting harder, but on average, uh, Majin Vegeta is going to be getting this a lot more often, the attacks effective against all types. Moving on now to the categories. I know this video is going really long, I do apologize, but we got to cover everything. You got to cover everything. Next up, we have the other world category. And uh, like I told you guys, it's an okay category. It's really not that exciting. I mean, we got the uh, LR Gogeta here, and then everybody else is like, okay you know like we got some good units don't get me wrong like we got uh, this guy with his extreme z awakening is an absolute monster um you know str godita is still really good and uh you know that's kind of it man we got a couple of extreme units here and it's a super small category the first thing you'll notice there's only like one two three four five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So not even 20 units in this category. Very, very small, very, very limited. And um, it's not, yeah, it's not that exciting. But the good thing is he does have Super Saiyan 3 as well. So as far as team building goes, uh, you can still build a very good team with his leader skill. But I think for the most part, you'll most of the time be running him as a, you know, as just like part of a team as, as opposed to the main leader for the team. Now moving on to the Super Saiyan 2 category, which as I said is actually a far better category in my opinion than the other world category because you got some pretty crazy units here. You got the Kale and Khalifla, you got the AGL LR Gohan, you also have the Intel LR Gohan, you got Majin Vegeta here. And then uh, if you go down here, just far more options man. Kefla, Transforming Vegeta, got a support here, uh, a couple of other Majin Vegetas, we got the... Uh, you know, the int Super Saiyan 3 transforming Goku on this category, whereas Majin Vegeta is not on Goku's new category, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, it's still not the best category for sure, but it is, in my opinion, a lot better than the other world category. Uh, but that being said, he does also have resurrected warriors. So uh, most of our units are most likely going to be coming from that category as opposed to the new Super Saiyan 2 category. And uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. Let me see if there's anything else I missed. Um, nope, that's everything. So uh, that is going to be today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys learned something from it. And uh, as I said in the beginning of this video, I don't really want to tell people what to do with their stones because at the end of the day, the decision is up to you. I always tell people to do what makes them happy, do what makes the game the most fun for them, right? So if having you know this goku or this majin vegeta or pulling some dupes of the lr super saiyan 4s will make you happy and make you like enjoy the game more then you should do that right like don't listen to what everybody else says and you know if everybody says skip this banner and summon for the lr gogeta and lr vegeta like yes that is good as far as like getting the best units i guess but i mean if that doesn't make the game as fun for you, then why would you do that, right? At the end of the day, the goal is to make this game as fun as possible. So um, I'm not going to say like you should summon or you should not summon. What I would say is it wouldn't be a bad idea to summon. It wouldn't be like you're making a huge mistake if you summoned on either of these banners, especially because we are getting the, the tickets. We're also getting um, three plus one multis, right? Three, three multis and then one free multi. Um, and there's possibly going to be some kind of discount with the first couple of multis too. So let's say it's like 30 stones, 40 stones, 45 stones, or 30, 35, 40, whatever it is for the first couple of multis. So you're getting an extra discount in addition to the 3 plus 1. Then in that case, I think it's going to be extra worth it. And I do think it's worth the stones to at least do that first round of multis, right? So uh, that's all I got to say, guys. That is today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys plan to do. Uh, when these banners drop, are you going to be completely skipping or passing these banners? Or are you going to be summoning and uh, try to pull one of these new units? I mean, they're both really good. I'll be honest. They're both really good. They look dope. The animations are great. Um, and I personally will be 
doing some summons for sure. So uh, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, if you liked the video, then make sure to like the damn video. And if it's your first time watching me, first time to the channel, and you like what you see, then definitely hit that big red subscribe button to join the Tiger Squad now. And while you're at it, hit that notification bell too, so that YouTube knows you want to stay up to date with all my latest content. And that's it. I'm out of here. Until next time, hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'm Tiger with Tiger Uppercut Media, signing out.